So uh, sometime back in October of 2022, um, somehow I messed up the uh, coil on my Swiss watch and I hadn't really had any experience with messing up coils before. And I guess I sort of took it for granted that it was there. But um, what happened was um, the coil wasn't totally like a open circuit, but um, if any of these like pieces of metal from the coil would hit uh, the chassis, it would short out and stop working. So um, either that's because it has sort of defense windings or it had like sort of branched windings, which would be a good idea, but uh, it didn't help me from this uh, shorting out. So eventually it occurred to me that um, I could replace the coil or uh, replace the movement. And uh, the movement is obviously going to be more money. And in some ways it's easier to replace the coil because you don't have to attach the hands or hope that it's going to fit again. So in some ways it's nice, but there's um, you're going to have to uh, replace some more delicate parts if you're going to go for the coil route. And uh, what I originally did was I tried and take the coil out without taking the plate and circuit board out. But, uh, I'm not sure if you can actually do that or not, but when I put it back together, I released all that just to make it as convenient as possible or as safe as possible. So in my case, um, I have a Ronda 703 movement. And um, you can see the things here I, I drew in purple are the things I had to manipulate or take apart. And the coil was the thing that got replaced ultimately. And uh, what I did was um, I went to Amazon.ca. There's some other places that were cheaper. My parents uh, uh, ordered from Amazon a lot, so I wanted to get on their plan. They were nice enough to uh, order it. Uh, but delivered it was something like uh, $18. So my understanding is a lot of these Ronda 700 uh, series movements have basically the same coil part. In fact, um, the documentation, I think the 700 to 705, uh, does list uh, the coil as um, you know being the same part for those models. So one problem I was looking at was that the metal strap was always sort of collapsing in on the mechanics, and that maybe was what even broke the coil in the first place. So um, in the future, I'm going to be you know careful about that. But what I did is I, t I took a link out so I could open it up, so it wouldn't always be fighting uh, with the strap uh, on this delicate uh, operation. So here's a picture of it mostly disassembled, but um, actually before this, uh, there's sort of like a, a battery terminal and a protective uh, plastic barrier on the bottom of the battery there that had actually fallen out by accident because uh, I didn't know it would come out but uh, by turning it upside down it would come out. Uh, it turns out that those pieces were intact and I was able to reinstall them. So here's a picture of uh, some of the pieces I put back in. Uh, that particular coil there was the uh, the old coil that just happened to be kind of there in that package but it turns out I never took a picture of the new one uh, which looked pretty much the same but it had a pretty funky new uh, packaging. So at this point, I had managed to put in the battery terminal as well as the new coil. And the battery terminal fits into a little plastic pin. So here's a picture of the PCB. And uh, the thing about this watch is basically it uh, uses electronic timing to electromotively um, uh, drive a gear. And um, this is a pretty simple uh, setup here. On the right-hand side of this image is... Um, uh, a ring which uh, connects to one end of the battery. The other battery connects to the plate, which I suppose ultimately connects to the other side of this board. And on the left side, there are two terminals which go to the coil. So I don't see any kind of capacitor here. So it looks like it just gates uh, the battery power onto an electromagnet, which uh, drives a stepper motor. So here's a picture of the movement reassembled. And um, what seemed to me to be the best way to put the screws back in is to sort of lay them down right by the hole uh, laying down and sort of use the end of a pin to sort of um, make them collapse the end into the hole and then sort of try to rotate them and then rotate them with my finger once they were, the threads had engaged. Before that, what would happen is my finger would just pull the screws back out and uh, that wasn't particularly useful. So I struggled with it for quite a while, but I eventually got all the screws back in. Hooray, it worked. Would you believe that? So uh, this is immediately after uh, putting it all back together and... Um, I've been uh, testing all the time, and I know for like eight hours, it's like perfect, pretty well perfect time. So we'll see how it goes, but um, I suspect it is working properly. So just on an unrelated topic, the uh, spare parts were originally contained in this box, which has some special watches. Uh, one is a self-winding uh, credit Swiss watch with a little piece of gold. The other one was a Nor from a Norwegian ancestor. Uh, that unfortunately when I was little, 
I sort of broke, and um, I don't have a lot of hope of making it perfect. I mean, I guess maybe I could do that, but it wasn't that great of a watch on today's standards, but maybe back then it, uh, it would have been pretty impressive. So again, that's the original coil, which I think I'll just keep as a little keepsake. And uh, if I'm lucky, this watch will last another 10 or 20 years. We'll see how it goes. Thanks.